my name is Daniela Leitner. Uh, my primary job here in the lab is this machinery that you see behind me, which is called the V-Accelerator. And as you might guess from its name, its primary job, my primary idea is to re-accelerate the rare isotope that we produce here at the lab. You can see here the, the project is progressing fast. Also, we are in commissioning phase, but its primary, at its first stage, will come into operation in 2012. So the rare isotopes coming from the Psychodon facility are traveling very fast when they are produced. There's many experiments that can use this fast, uh, fast isotopes, but there are also many experiments that need the ions at a very precise energy. So what we do is we uh, we bring the rare isotopes to a gas cell and slow them down to almost thermal speed, so completely stop them. But now they are way too slow for, uh, for nuclear astrophysics experiments. And so the next step is to re-accelerate them, and that's what, what, what happens in this machinery. It ha it's the first step of this process is starting right here in the, in the EBIT ion source. This is a charge breeder. So we take these rare isotopes and we strip many, many electrons off of them in order to make them highly charged ions. And why, why do we do that? When, when they are highly charged, the accelerator process is, is much more efficient because it's, it's multiplied by the charge. So by going from 1 plus to N plus, we can make this accelerator much shorter and more cost effective. The, uh, the re-accelerator re is a linear accelerator. The way if you have seen videos from the lab before, you have seen cyclotons where the ions accelerate as they go in circles. Here they are accelerated as they go straight. And as they come out of the EBIT source, they travel this way and get, uh, get mass separated to make a clean beam out, out of the ions again. And then go through this machinery and go to the first accelerator structure, which is called a radio frequency quadruple. And in this section, the, the ions are actually punched to, to, to small pieces and then accelerated to a, a speed of 6,700 miles per second or 0.6 MeV per nucleon. So behind me, uh, behind me now you see the first, uh, first two modules of the superconducting Linux structure where the ions come up coming from the RFQ at about 3.6 percent of the speed of light get injected into the superconducting Linux section that you see behind me and there they get further accelerated to the final energy that is required by the experiment. So inside here we have small acceleration gaps that we can precisely tune independently from, from each, each other and that means that we can control the energy of the, of the, of the final beam very precisely. So as I said before, that the, the structure inside is superconducting, that it means that all those cavities are immersed in, in liquid helium. They run at 4.5 Kelvin or four, minus 452 Fahrenheit. So we have liquid helium inside these modules. And why do we do that? We do that because by immersing the accelerator structure into liquid helium, the, energy pro the accelerator process is more energy efficient and the structure can be built much more compact. So the re-accelerator facility uses the same technology as the FAB Linux, which is slated to be coming online in 2018. And one of the missions of the re-accelerator is actually to prototype those cavity, cavity structures for the FAB facility so that we get experience and operating, operating experience with these new structures.